In this lesson, we will learn about what expressions are and how to apply them. Okay, so you may not have heard of expressions before, and if you have heard of them, you may think that they sound like scary math or coding, but expressions do not have to be this way. And I'm gonna teach you how to write a very easy expression that you're going to wanna use all the time in your motion graphics projects once you get the hang of it. Now, an expression is simply a little piece of code or math that adds some kind of a dynamic movement to a layer that you apply it to. And the reason that I'm telling you about expressions right now is because I want to create a little bit more of a dynamic feel for our circles here. They just look a little bit static and I want them to feel more like they're floating than just sitting there. And rather than going in and trying to hand animate each little movement and trying to mimic the actual look and weight and physics that would come into play for an animation like this, I'm going to teach you a really easy expression that takes care of all all of that for me and it's called the wiggle expression so I'm going to scoot back kind of to this beginning part here and I really want all of my shapes to be able to have this expression so I'm going to go ahead and go inside of that three shapes pre comp that we created and I'm going to add this to the first layer that you see here just the shape layer two. So we're going to add the wiggle expression to the position property. So because we have animated its position already, there's going to be a few keyframes here. Now the wiggle expression is only going to move us away from the actual keyframes that we've already set by a little bit. We are able to tell it how much we want it to move away from those, but it still is going to hit all of those positions. So to go ahead and start typing in this expression, just with my shape layer two selected, I'm going to alt click the stopwatch and that's gonna bring me in to the expression dialog. So go ahead and hold Alt and click that. And you see that the refresh disables so that we are not really able to preview while we're in the expression mode, while we're typing that in. So automatically it just types in that transform dot position and that's not what I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the backspace key. And then we're gonna type in our wiggle expression. And all it is is you're gonna type in wiggle, just the word wiggle, all lowercase, W-I-G-G-L-E. And then we're gonna add a few values. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some generic values for now. So I'm gonna do open parentheses and then we'll give it a value of five and then we'll add a comma to separate it from its next value and then the value 15 and close parentheses. And then once you're finished writing your expression, you can just click anywhere and that'll close you out of the expression mode and that's going to bring you in to um, being able to see the refresh again. So now I'm gonna go ahead and solo this shape layer two, just so that you can see how its position is moving. And you can also see that it still is hitting those keyframes that we've set for it. It's just kind of wiggling now. So let's talk a little bit about what these values mean that we've typed into our wiggle expression. So the first number is the number of times per second that will cause it to wiggle. So because I've put a five here, this says five times every one second. So because we're working in 24 frames per second, this is going to wiggle five times every 24 frames. So that's gonna give it a pretty jittery look. And we can go in there and change that if we want, if we feel like it's moving around a little bit too much. The next value that you see here is for the actual property. So this is going to be the pixels that it's actually moving. So right now we're telling it, we don't want you to ever stray further than 15 pixels away from your current position. So once we get here to this keyframe, it's still staying in position and moving along that path that we created, but it just has a little bit of room to move around and it has about 15 pixels that it can do that within. So as I kind of scrub through there, you can see that's about 15 pixels that that circle is moving. So if you wanted to go in and change your values just so you were able to see something really different and how that affects that value, you just click right there on the piece of text 
and you see that that opens back up that dialog for me. So I'm going to change this to let's say 100 just so you can see what that would look like. Now it can move 100 pixels so that's going to look a lot crazier than what we had earlier. So this may be a little bit too much. I think what I'm going to do now is come back in and change this to maybe like a 12. So it's only going to move 12 pixels. And instead of it moving five times per second, I'm just going to have it move four times per second. So I'm just turning it down ever so slightly. And you can see that that's just a little bit smaller of a wiggle than what we had before. And if you want to see what this looks like in real time, you can just kind of create a little bit of a work area there and do a RAM preview. So I just created that and hit the zero key. And now watching that back in real time, that looks pretty good. That doesn't look like too much of a wiggle. Now, if you wanted it to look like it was floating even more, you would want to turn down the number of times that it wiggles per second. So you could come in there and change that to a two. Now, if you ever wanted it to wiggle even less than a one, where it was wiggling fewer than one times per second, you would just want to plug in a decimal number. So you could put a 0.5 in there, and it would only wiggle once every two seconds that point. So at that point, you're kind of looking at a little bit of division to figure out what that's going to look like for your animation. So a lot of times you just plug in a few different values until you find something that looks like what you want. So now this looks a little bit more like a floating animation just because we've slowed down the amount of times that it's wiggling in one second. So now what I want to do is go ahead and apply this to my other two layers. So I already have the expression written out here that I'm happy with. So instead of having to type it over and over, I'm going to come in there and select that and we'll do a copy paste. So go ahead and highlight that and hit contr control C. And then we'll do the same thing for these other two layers just by pasting it there. So go ahead and open up the position properties for your other two layers. And then we'll alt click those positions and just hit control V to type in or paste that expression right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the last one as well. Hit control V to paste that. And now I'm going to uncheck that solo switch so you can see what this looks like and we'll do a RAM preview just to watch this through. Okay so I'm just going to cut this RAM preview a little bit short here. So we're just kind of stopping that there so you can still see what this is doing and now it just kind of has a little bit of a more dynamic feel to it. It's just kind of floating around in space there and looks a lot more interesting than just that static look that we had earlier. And our blending mode also looks a lot more interesting too because you can see how that mode is affected as those layers kind of bounce around there. Now I want to show you one more thing that you can do with this and I want to add a percent sign that we're going to house inside of this yellow circle here. So I'm going to just grab my type tool really quickly and just type a percent sign. And I'm going to make this kind of maybe just a dark color for now. We can go in and change this later. I'm just going to do a dark gray color, kind of scale that up a little bit. And I probably also want to go ahead and make that a 3D layer just since all the other layers in this comp are 3D. And now what I want to do is parent this to that yellow layer. So that's going to be shape layer one. So I'm going to come over here and grab that parent pick whip from the percent sign and parent it to shape layer one. And now as I just scrub through here really quickly, or I can do a RAM preview if you want to see it in real time, you are able to see that now the percent sign is actually going to follow the position of that yellow circle. So that's pretty interesting that we are able to use a expression to actually drive multiple layers simply by using parenting along with that expression. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that RAM preview off right there at the beginning. And you're, you can definitely see that the percent sign is following along with that yellow circle. So it's pretty interesting how those can work together. Now, you can also get some of these expressions that we're talking about here through the effects and presets panel. So I want to show you how to do that really quickly. I'm not going to apply them to any of my layers. I just want you to be aware of where they are. So come up there to window. We'll type in effects and presets. Just just choose that and we'll clear out what was in there earlier. If I drop that down there, 
you can see that we have this behaviors option there inside of the animation presets. And these are all kind of set up as expressions. So these don't always play nicely with the parenting action that we did earlier with this percent sign. So that's why I wanted to show you one that you just type in as a hard line of code. So I just want you to keep that in mind as you play around with these, but I would definitely recommend coming in here and grabbing some of these and playing with these just on different layers, figuring out what they do. And if you want to learn more about expressions, you can check out our Digital Tutor's other course called After Effects Expressions Made Easy. It's a great course to get you up to speed on really everything you would need to know for getting started with expressions in After Effects. What we've talked about here is really just the tip of the iceberg for how powerful expressions are to drive your animations. So in this lesson, we learn how to type an expression and how to attribute that expression to another layer using parenting.